today uh, we are going to begin with our uh, second unit uh, where we would be talking about the dimensions of uh, subjective adjustment okay uh, the first module was basically uh, you know uh, trying to tell uh, all of us uh, that uh, what is the basic uh, process of adjustment how do we define uh, something as important as normality okay and uh, today we are going to talk about uh, the basic ingredients that are uh, used to define the whole uh, know, construct of adjustment. So, if you come forward with a set of response, okay, a set of behavior and then if somebody else has to evaluate you how adjusted you are or the spheres in which you might be having trouble in terms of adjustment, then what are those basic criteria? Okay. Now, one of the important thing is that adjustment is always considered to be multi dimensional. No? So, you will have many many dimensions of uh, adjustment, but then right now we would see uh, that there are certain uh, traits or there are certain processes that are considered as important variables that defines adjustment. Okay. And it is basically the interplay, the interaction between these variables that become the primary uh, source of describing the level of adjustment of any individual. In psychology, you can assume of a variable when you try to quantify it in two forms. Okay. We are uh, referring primarily to the fact that uh, you know, there are uh, several interacting variables when it comes to defining the construct of adjustment. Now, one possibility of defining a variable is that it starts from a theoretical 0. Okay, as you would usually imagine and then it goes to some maximum point. This could be one way of looking at it. The second way of looking at it could be that fine you have a 0 value somewhere the neutral point the 0 point in the center and then you have equal spread of uh, this course in the negative and the positive directions. Okay. So, when you uh, think of variable usually we think of the spread of score in this fashion 0 to some uh, maximum uh, point or theoretical uh, 0 or a neutral point to equal dis uh, dispersion in the negative and the positive direction. But actually when you look at uh, special uh, uh, constructs which are of uh, importance to psychology, then you realize that there could be difficulty in terms of adopting the first definition of a variable. Say for example, uh, take IQ your intelligence quotient for example, or uh, the most popular construct being uh, researched and discussed nowadays EQ, okay, emotional quotient. Now, if you think of a theoretical 0 okay, and imagine somebody uh, having 0 IQ. Okay. Now, this might sound uh, know that theoretically there could be a possibility like this, but uh, in practice you never come across an individual with 0 IQ. A person could have problem in terms of you know, emotion regulation, in terms of uh, you know, emotion imbalances, but then you cannot think of somebody with zero emotion. Okay. Similarly, you could have one type of personality, I could have some other type of personality, third person could have other type of personality traits, but then you cannot assume of a zero personality, means absence of a psychological trait cannot be thought of. Okay. Uh, uh, let me take uh, Another example, say the whole concept of uh, mental retardation, okay, the whole issue of uh, intellectual disability has to do with the IQ level of the person concerned. Okay. Uh, I am sure you must be aware of this fact that uh, whenever uh, uh, one has to find out the level of intellectual deficit in uh, individuals who suffer from this the primary uh, source of uh, information is uh, their level of IQ which is measured using one or the other psychological tool. And then you say that standard uh, know, score usually of uh, this very age group is this much. So, say for example, if you are evaluating the IQ of a 10 year old child, okay, you say that uh, average 10 year old child usually their IQ ranges between this to this score. Okay. And this very individual has scored far less than 
<coughs> what is expected of students in this range and hence he or she is suffering from intellectual disability. Okay. Now, there also you have you know uh, certain categorization okay. mild, moderate, severe, profound these are the four uh, categories in the case of mental retardation, but even there you do not say that you have zero intelligence or you have negative intelligence okay. or say I say that uh, no uh, I am uh, introvert you are an extrovert, but then these are bipolar type of divisions no? that somebody could be at one end one could be introvert at the other end somebody could be extrovert and there could be a possibility that in between okay, uh, one becomes ambivert, no? you have little characteristics of introversion and little characteristics of extraversion, but you cannot say that you have no personality at all, zero personality. So, theoretical zero has always been a concern in the case of psychological variables and in certain cases you would realize that although when we think in terms of dispersion, okay, uh, deviation from the normality, we do think in terms of you know some neutral point and then spread in both the directions, but at times you would find even this needs to be rethought. So, these are our uh, six dimensions of subjective adjustment that we would be focusing uh, you know in this very module selective awareness, tolerance, autonomy, impulse control and behavioral control, self realization and personal integration. So, these six basic parameters that would be uh, used to define how adjusted you are okay. or your overall uh, know capability to fit into the larger uh, know, uh, social uh, realm is defined by these six characteristics. Fine. Now, what we would do is one by one we would go into the details of it. You remember in the beginning I told you that uh, what we would do is that we will try to stretch all these characteristics. No? So, each of these dimensions okay, we will stretch it to see that what could be the you know, maximum possible spread of these characteristics. Okay. So, we will see the extremes of it both, both ends okay. and then try to uh, explore uh, that what is more acceptable being on the extremes or uh, being towards only one side or being only uh, at then closer to the neutral point, okay, this is what we would be doing. Okay. Now, each dimension of uh, this uh, subjective adjustment the six of them that we have seen can be described in multi uh, sorry in unidimensional terms. No? So, you can talk of uh, only personal integration, you could talk of uh, uh, only uh, impulse and behavior control, you could talk only of selective awareness. So, one way of uh, know, uh, looking at it initially could be that you look at each of these dimensions and your approach becomes unidimensional, but the moment you talk of adjustment this would mean that fine there is an interplay between all six of them. Now, imagine all six of them having variable level okay, and each of them interacting with each other with their level of variation okay, and that interplay makes the whole process of adjustment as multidimensional. So, uh, just to uh, know, uh, make it visually appealing, so you have your first uh, dimension selective awareness, tolerance, autonomy, personal integration, behavior and impulse control and self realization. Okay. But then these are only when you look at it in with respect to their uh, individual dimensions, but then when you think in terms of overall adjustment you realize that this is how you know uh, you have to strike that balance there is a tight rope on which you have to walk because situation will always give you uh, you know certain limitations situation will always demand you certain things from you and you have to strike a balance between what you are capable of what the situation demands from you what your limitations are okay and accordingly come forward with a behavior and that behavior will always be you know guided by uh, these six basic parameters and based on uh, know how closely you fit and how capable you are in terms of striking that balance on a tight rope, 
one declares that fine you have been uh, you know, well adjusted in the situation too. So, we first come to selective awareness. What I will do here is that we first come we will come to uh, the process of selection, we will come to the process of awareness, we will plug them together, talk about selective awareness, take couple of examples and uh, examples might look weird little bit, but we would take uh, you know, small examples uh, to something uh, you know, which is of grave concern okay, and we will try to understand this dimension. Now, selection is a process wherein uh, a human being selects one object or one individual or one scenario over the other options. Okay. On what ground you make selection is your choice, okay. but selection would always mean choosing one at the cost of others. Awareness would be uh, again no, uh, your conscious attempt to observe something okay, and to be aware of that. Again it is your choice whether you want to focus on that, you do not want to focus on that, okay, that is uh, no, primarily your prerogative. When you look at the world around us, okay, analyze your own behavior, behavior of others, you realize that we do show certain degree of selectivity for every, every, everything in life. Okay. You choose one food over the other, so although you may say that I like 10 different type of vegetables, Okay. If you have to rate them in terms of uh, preference, one would always supersede the, the remaining. Okay. So, somebody might say that you know, I like uh, you know, uh, say capsicum, I like mushroom, I like paneer, I like many such things, but then mushroom gets priority over rest of the things. Okay. Similarly, if you are asked about uh, you know, certain type of dresses, you will say that yes, yes, this is also fine, that is also fine, even that is also good, but then your preference would be for one particular type of a dress. When you are talked about your friends, you say, ha, he is also my good friend, I mean the, that person is also a very good friend of mine, she also happens to be a good friend of mine, but then if you have to choose your best friend, you will realize that only one person would succeed, uh, you know, getting that rank. This shows that uh, we always have this, this tendency of making selection in our life. In terms of adjustment, what we do is uh, that we show the tendency to get more and more familiar and involved with certain aspects of the environment okay, or we completely try to ignore them. So, there is a larger uh, you know, uh, option that is available uh, to you and then you choose to focus on one at the cost of others. Okay. One typical example could be that when I am uh, looking at you, okay, uh, I at one point in time look at one person at the cost of the remaining. Okay. Now, this is a pure conscious process, I know in which direction I am moving my head, I know whom I am looking at, but then it keeps on shifting, but at one point of time it is only one at the cost of the remaining. Either I do that or I have the other possibility of exclusively looking in this direction and completely ignoring all of you. That also could be another possibility. Now, the extreme in this sense would be that uh, you choose only one individual and start focusing on him or her for this entire duration of 50 minutes. Okay. So, say for example, I choose him, okay, I would not do that, okay. But say I choose him and then I keep on talking about selective awareness to him only and I do not look at anybody else. I am sure all of you would find it very absurd. Okay. You would get uh, no, uh, distracted, you would not feel uh, no, attentive towards what, what is being shared with you. But if I keep on keep on you know, shifting my eye gaze okay, in different directions, then uh, no, there is some degree of dynamics that you would you might like. I would not say you would like, but you might like. Imagine another extreme of it, when I start you know I turn in this direction okay, and I do not look at any one of you for the full duration of 50 minutes okay. and I am sure what you are going to do. Okay. I would not name uh, what you would do, but there would be full range of uh, things. Okay. So, this is what it means you know, when it comes to selective awareness that when you either try to you know very, very uh, specifically you select an object in the environment and focus only and only on that, 
versus a situation when you completely try to ignore the presence of a particular stimulus in the environment. Now, what could be the possibilities? One, you selectively process all relevant information. Okay. So, selectively processing of relevant information would be what was the uh, topic that was being uh, deliberated today in the class, uh, what was the text that was uh, written on the uh, PPT slide, okay. uh, is it really worth noting down or is it too generic and anyone can think of it and write it when it comes to uh, quizzes and exams. So, if you decide it out of the four statements made over here, one it is good to note it down, remaining three I can ignore. Okay. What you do is that you selectively process the relevant information. Okay. Uh, take uh, another example, no? you are uh, no little keen to uh, understand that how the instructor uh, know, uh, analyzes uh, these things and what are the examples that are being quoted. So, you are primarily interested only in that. So, there could be a possibility that you look at the slide and say that it is too generic and nothing is specific, I need not note it down. But yes, there are uh, interesting examples. So, let me jot down you know, some key components of those examples. So, that I can also you know, reproduce some socially relevant, uh, very, very uh, you know, culturally significant type of examples in my quizzes and exams or when I talk to others on issues like this. Third possibility could be, oh, I saw uh, that you were putting on the same jacket till the first module, second module you have changed it. Okay. So, it is not the content, but besides content, you are being aware of some other things also. Okay. That is how you make selection. Now, different people will have different uh, you know, selection strategies. Okay. At times, you realize that uh, you uh, know situation forces you to attend one thing over the other. Imagine a situation, uh, you come to the class okay, and I tell you or somebody tells you that sometime back uh, you know I saw a black cobra entering this room, but it has we were uh, it has not gone out and we were not able to locate where it is. Okay. I am sure none of you is going to look at me, focus at me or look at the screen. All of you would keep looking down where the cobra is. Am I correct? Now, the cue that has been given to you okay, has certain degree of embedded danger. The danger that you perceive in this uh, information makes you selectively uh, know search for all relevant cues that has to do with the object of fear and hence you would keep on keep on looking downwards, you would keep on uh, searching where the cobra is. Okay. Because there is a threat perception. Okay. Uh, absurd to compare, but let me do that. Uh, say you have been by and large skipping all uh, know, uh, lectures, <coughs> there was a surprise quiz uh, you did not know and then uh, you missed that also thought of giving one or the other reason, but did not succeed having a compensatory quiz. Okay. And then you realize that you have missed two quizzes, you realize that uh, no, you are not comfortable with uh, many of these constructs that has been talked about in the class and now the mid-sem exam comes. And then day and night you keep on keep on uh, you know, reading the books, asking others for notes, looking at it, so that you could compensate for. Uh, all that you have lost during uh, you know, halfway of the semester. On those two days, you think of nothing else except the content, the deliberations okay, and what could be the expected questions. Okay. Now, you are compromising with the rest of the uh, available stuff in the environment and focusing only on this, because you know that you might have to pay a price for poor performance in the exams because of certain things that you have done. These are you know uh, basically uh, the dynamics of selective awareness. There are uh, interesting processes in that, one is that when you choose something and then you attenuate means you excessively focus on that. The other possibility is of negative adaptation, where 
attenuation or cessation of response to a stimulus that one finds to be non significant that takes place. No? Means, you consider that something in the environment is not at all significant for you okay? and therefore, you do not focus your attention on that at all. You cease to uh, you know, focus your attention on that okay? or there could be a possibility that you have been over exposed to something okay? and that has uh, led to certain degree of desensitization in you and therefore, you do not care for stuff like this. One example could be that a familiar sight okay, uh, that you do not process, because you have been in this type of a situation for long. Okay. Now, say for example, uh, somebody coming to IIT campus and says, oh such a lush green campus, beautiful. Okay. And uh, if remember your first day when you came to the campus, you also might have thought like that, okay. but because you have been sharing this uh, environment for long therefore, uh, you never think of it again. Okay. So, that is basically negative adaptation. Okay. Before I come to the examples, uh, I would not go into the details of it, but it has to do with uh, one of the concepts in uh, psychophysics, uh, where we talk of three tiers of continuum, three tiers of scales, physical continuum, psychological continuum and judgmental continuum. Physical continuum is basically uh, the scale on which you measure uh, presence, absence or intense presence of any stimulus. Okay. Psychological continuum is that even though things are uh, you know, physically present or not present or uh, intense presence of uh, the stimulus is there, psychologically how do you appreciate it, how do you appraise it. Okay. And judgmental continuum is okay, uh, find that something is uh, physically available or not available or available to the highest possible extent. Psychologically, you think in a different way about it, but how do you react to it? Interestingly, uh, you would find that uh, physical, psychological, and judgmental continuum usually you would not find uh, know that if you draw dots of physical presence of the object, psychological appreciation of the stimulus, and the response that has been given, you will always find dispersion here and there. Okay. They usually do not fall on the same uh, point. I am taking uh, one example of a mosquito, the reason being no, I am trying to choose examples which are too, too, too relevant to you, you know, so that you can very easily uh, relate it with it. Now, think of uh, presence of a mosquito, you are working on your BTP. Okay a mosquito comes you know starts moving here and there around you, that is the physical presence of the mosquito. Psychologically say there could be a situation that uh, fine you get irritated, there could be a situation that you, uh, you know simply uh, do not pay attention to it, there could be a situation where uh, it distracts you, but you again you get distracted again refocus on your BTP work that is your psychological uh, continuum. So, although physical presence of the mosquito is very much there, psychologically you are processing it differently. So, what judgment do you take? I recollect your experiences, a mosquito you know, coming around you okay, and then you are working on your BTP and you simply say, all you do is that you do not want even to uh, get distracted in terms of focusing where you are looking at. So, you simply know you find the mosquito here and you wave your hand, so that the mosquito is uh, rippled to the other direction, one type of a judgment. Second type of uh, know, decision that you take is that fine, I will blow it off, no? so you say Phew. third could be, fourth could be that fine, I leave my work, I chase the mosquito first. Okay. So, uh, say one single individual at different points in time can react in any of these ways. Now, think of a collection of individual. Okay. So, there would be a huge, huge, huge range of response to it, okay. something as small as mosquito. Okay. Take another example, which uh, has 
certain uh, consequences. Uh, say somebody uh, know gets engaged in some uh, argument with you. Possibility, one possibility could be that fine, I do not look at it, do not listen to it, I do not pay attention to it at all, completely I try to ignore it, the extreme of it. Second, you get extremely agitated, okay, but still it is verbal exchange. Okay. Another extreme of it, when you get involved in physical assault and the extreme of it that you stab the individual. Okay, and the visual has the uh, six knives. So, imagine no, uh, how angry one becomes. So, right from uh, no, say complete ignorance to complete uh, no, extreme form of behaviors, that could be a possibility. Certain aspects, which could be uh, no, uh, much more socially ex uh, appreciated something which is psychologically considered to be appropriate, something that is also considered to be legally appropriate, you know, legal, their legal acceptance is there. You know. But in terms of, uh, you know, if you look at these four variations and of course, there would be thousands and thousands of variation, intermediate variations. Okay. Some of them uh, do not uh, you know, fall in the jurisdiction of the law of the land. So, if you get engaged into that, fine, the law does not uh, no, interfere there, but some of them uh, invites punitive measures. No? So, the court of law can punish you and for the extreme of it, uh, it could be life sentence, the worst form of a punitive measure that the law of the land can provide to you. Deliberately, I am showing this uh, visual to you, I am sure uh, all of you must have seen this. Uh, this was uh, one of the photographs. Uh, that was published in the newspaper uh, during this uh, post Godra communal riot in Gujarat. Okay. Uh, later on, uh, this became a very, very popular photograph. Okay. And now, if you type uh, you know, uh, Gujarat riots, Godra riot, you know, uh, in the, and make a search, Google search in images, you know, this would be one of the most common image which will appear. But I uh, very clearly remember one uh, example and I thought I will share that with you. The days when this riot was taking place, in one of the English dailies, this was uh, published as a called front page image. Okay. So, front page of the newspaper, top center this image was published, uh, we saw it. And uh, I think uh, all those who saw it, this visual is so intense that they all got you know, uh, emotionally aroused. So, uh, later in the day at around 9.30 or 10, when we, many of our colleagues when we met, we did talk about it okay. and everybody felt extremely bad about the whole episode. Since then, the first exposure of this visual till now, when I today, when I am sharing this with you, believe me, I do not have any emotional feeling when I am describing this as an example to you. One reason I have uh, overused this as an example, okay. the other that uh, know this image I have seen uh, for long or I have seen much more intense image compared to this and therefore, it does not invoke that sense of emotion in me. Another similar example, this was uh, when uh, we had uh, tsunami waves hitting uh, Nagapattinam and other areas in <coughs> southern India. Again uh, an interesting example, one of my colleague uh, met me in the afternoon and uh, then he told me that uh, I am really disturbed today and he did really appear to be very disturbed. And when I asked him that what happened and he said uh, that you know uh, in the morning his schedule was that he would get ready for the office, his meanwhile his son will also get ready for his school, the father will first drop the child in the school and then come to his office. This was his uh, morning schedule every day. 
So, father was getting ready, the son was also getting ready and meanwhile the son came to the drawing room where that day's newspaper was put there okay. and once again the cover page had this uh, leading photograph of uh, you know, dead bodies floating in the water, some cars floating in the water, all the debris of the tsunami. That was a visual I guess from Nagapattinam okay. and the sun suddenly screamed and the moment the sun screamed, both the parents they rushed, they thought something has happened. So, they both rushed to the child okay. and when he saw his child, he described to me that the sun was simply you know, uh, uh, he had closed his eyes and was pointing towards the newspaper okay. that you see this, it was so disturbing for the child. My colleague was disturbed because he said that morning while having a, the cup of tea, I also went through the newspaper, I also saw that visual, but that visual did not do anything to me. Okay. His question was that have I become very insensitive and his son makes him realize that, that is the degree of selective awareness in our daily life. Something uh, that some people will tend to ignore, some people will try to uh, know, overreact to it. And this is how we all try to adjust in the given situation. The recent uh, episode in Delhi which led to all these uh, huge, huge, huge uproars. Okay. Uh, the boy uh, who was there along with uh, the girl there in this uh, episode, uh, no, later on admitted that he was uh, no, by the side of the road for two hours asking for help. And uh, many people uh, they crossed by, they did uh, no, um, try to stop for a while and then they went off, they did not extend their helping hands. Okay. Now, somebody who does not look at you, somebody who looks at you, slows down the vehicle and goes, somebody uh, know, who stops the vehicle only looks at you, nothing else and somebody else who stops, provide helping hand to you, informs the police and does all this. So, different people uh, will uh, know, do things differently. Now, adjustment does not only mean termination of reaction to certain stimuli, it also involves intensification of response to some other stimuli. You know. Same situation okay, uh, where one person decides not to uh, know, show anger, the other person decides to show verbal anger, the third person decides to know even apply one or two punches. Okay. And the other person who decides uh, know, to get engaged in a long term aggressive reaction and perhaps does not forget uh, the whole episode for longer period in the life. Okay. So, either you completely try to uh, avoid responding to it or you, you know, keep on keep on intensifying the response, usually in the case of uh, aggressive retaliations there is an intensification of the response that you gradually see. I am sure you must have seen uh, know, different types of protests, their visuals. Uh, initially you begin uh, with uh, know, slogans and you do not realize uh, when these slogans finally get converted into uh, breaking of properties, okay, destruction of uh, the um, uh, things that are available in the environment. Okay. So, this is complete intensification of uh, the response. Now, individuals adaptab uh, adaptability to differentially respond to a stimuli okay, that are available in the environment is the core when it comes to adjustment. Okay. That you have anger within you, but on one occasion you try not to uh, know, react, in the other occasion you decide to react in a milder way, third occasion you tend to uh, know, intensely show your aggression and this is how you try to adapt according to the environmental demand. Okay. And uh, you remember we had talked about this process once again that uh, the whole of psychology revolves around three important concepts or constructs cognitive, cognitive and affective. Therefore, even selective awareness applies to the affective domain or the emotional processes and the ideational domain that is the thought process. Okay. And uh, 
uh, besides of course, we have been talking about the sensory motor processes. No? So, even in terms of emotions, even in terms of thoughts, okay, you might be very, very selective in terms of where to invest your emotion, where to show intense emotion, where to completely withdraw from expressing your feelings, okay, uh, where to get into arguments, where uh, not to even think of the issue at all. Okay. So, this is how selective awareness works. What could be the extremes in cases of uh, no, uh, human reactions when it comes to subject, uh, selective awareness? One extreme possibility is that you are a rigid person who has limited stimulus bound awareness. Okay. We will discuss uh, this uh, thing that you are completely you know uh, brittle in your approach, extremely rigid okay, and you limit yourself only to what the immediate stimulus demanded from you, that is it. You do not think of any other thing, that could be one extreme of it. The other extreme of it is that you do not uh, live in the world of reality, you are basically dominated by fantasies and emotions. So, you have a fantasy and emotion dominated awareness, you fantasize okay, and get emotionally involved with your fantasies and you are aware of your fantasies rather than the reality. So, these are the extreme possibility and of course, if you try to uh, know come to the center point it would be you have a complete reality oriented awareness. Okay. Majority of us would fall somewhere close to reality oriented awareness, okay. but some of us uh, know might shift either towards the other direction of rigidity or the extreme direction towards fantasy and emotion dominated uh, reactions. Uh, let us take a couple of examples to uh, know, explain these extreme possibilities. Uh, you know that uh, on I think two days or perhaps only one day, I did say that uh, those of you who come early should take this side of the seat. Therefore, uh, know you have more and more chairs available on this side, but still if you are uh, know too uh, willing to sit on the other side and if you are late, use the other gate. Today I saw for the first day somebody using the other gate. Okay. So, you heard the instruction and then you thought that okay, no, it is really difficult because the proceedings are being recorded. So, it is good not to interfere in between. Okay. Somebody else uh, who still decided to you know, cut across and take the seat in the other direction. Okay. Somebody who comes up to this point suddenly recollects. Oh, recording is going on. So, you change your seat. Somebody who still does not uh, cut across, but comes right up to this point and then turns and takes the second seat in the second row. Difference of responses no? and these are interesting examples of how you selectively become aware of your involvement. Okay. This is not an offense to any one of you who have reacted in one way or the other, just I thought this is the immediate example that I can quote here. Uh, you must have come across several uh, presentations no? here and there several lectures. Uh, people who would know uh, right in the beginning before entering uh, the hall where the lecture is scheduled, okay, people who will switch off their mobile phone, people who would uh, know some other people who would try to put it on the silent mode and some who will take pride in uh, know retaining it in the general profile and if uh, know the call comes, okay, he will simply disconnect it. And the fourth set okay, who take out the mobile and say, oh, hello I am in a presentation. Another set will say, hello uh, Abhi I right now cannot talk to you. I am sure you must have come across all these types of people. No? Or say presentation is going on and if you have to go out of the room. Okay how do you go? Many people you would realize that they will ensure that they do not cross the projection area, because it distract others. Some who would very you know bend down and then quickly uh, cross through, somebody who would speed up and somebody who will very nicely walk, so that you have the 
shadow dance on the screen. This is what human beings are. Okay. Come to this is of course, your uh, the way you uh, your sensory motor processes we are talking about. Think of ideational issues. Okay. Somebody convinces you that your life is for a given cause and while fighting for the cause if you die that is the greatest heroic act that you can do in life. You are convinced okay. and then you become so rigid in your approach that you do not even think of revisiting uh, this issue at all. Think of suicide bombers. Somebody transplants this idea to you that if you do this you are fighting a novel cause. What happens to your body is not important. Okay. Whether the cause has been finally achieved or not that is what matters and hence you should take pride in doing whatever you do. Uh, of course, now uh, LTT is, is wiped out from Sri Lanka, but at one point in time they had the strongest squad of suicide bombers with them. Okay. Um, irrespective of whatever has taken place at the geopolitical level, Iraq till date experiences you know, those car bomb explosions even I think 2, 3 days back also there was a news you know, several uh, serial car bomb blast in uh, Iraq. Okay. These are examples when you, uh, you show that you are very, very rigid in your approach. You will do what you are convinced about irrespective of uh, whatever changes has taken place in the uh, social reality in your environment and you are limited only to certain type of stimulus and nothing else. Take, we will take up more examples you know, to show the full range of what happens to human beings and what are the variations. Uh, the popular uh, piece of art in Afghanistan, the Bamiyan Buddha, okay. one set of people taking pride in the fact okay, that we have a mountain uh, carving and a piece of a sculpture which is unique and we have it in Afghanistan in Bamiyan that is the area where it was. Okay. Another set of people who took pride in uh, you know, uh, firing from the guns, okay, the field guns to turn that piece of art into rubbles and you take pride in you know, saying that uh, fine or uh, my faith, my belief is against uh, you know, this type of uh, uh, representation of your faith. Okay and hence no Buddha can remain in this country. You take pride in turning it into rubbles. Somebody takes pride in collecting these rubbles and keeping it, uh, selling it in the market or keeping it in the drawing room. This small piece of stone okay, was a part of Bamiyan Buddha at one point in time. Another set of people who says that if people can you know, uh, return the rubbles back to us, we can reconstruct the Bamiyan Buddha. You have different, different types of uh, you know, ideologies, okay. different type of emotional attachments to uh, concern okay. and accordingly people react to it. But then you find that there could be uh, no, a possibility of extreme rigidity in terms of your approach. So, either I react this way and I will do only the way I love. I think this way and I will keep thinking irrespective of whatever arguments you give the way I have thought of it or I feel for a cause and I would keep feeling for it as strongly as I feel today irrespective of the changes that has taken place in the contemporary environment. That is one end of it. The other end of it is again very interesting. No? When you live in the world of fantasy, I do not know how many of you have seen this uh, uh, the episodes of this uh, serial, uh, there was a serial long back telecasted in our country called Mungeri Lal Ke Haseen Sapne. Okay. There is a character, there is a lead character in that uh, uh, serial, okay. used to inter whenever he used to interact with the environment, he would take some cue and start fantasizing. 
and he in his fantasy he would achieve the maximum that he could. Okay. A fantasy would once again come when we come to uh, our uh, third module, when we would be talking about uh, uh, the adjustment processes and there we would be talking about defense mechanisms. And during our uh, deliberations on the ego defense mechanism, once again we will take how daydreaming and fantasy play an important role there. Okay. But here we are talking about fantasy uh, that over dominates your awareness. Okay. So, you sit like this and uh, instead of uh, say focusing on what is being deliberated, okay, you start visualizing something else and it is really ple pleasurable no, to fantasize. Okay. You emotionally get involved in that, that whole content of fantasy, the whole dynamics of fantasy, you enjoy that, you know. but that also uh, you know, helps you get completely detached from whatever the contemporary need of the environment was. So, every time what you will attain is an imaginary achievement, something that might satisfy you, uh, you know, at least at, for that point of time, but others would consider you to be a completely dumb individual you know, who cannot perform at all and you yourself consider to be very happy because you have achieved it. Now, consider that type of a mismatch, okay. when the world thinks that you are uh, a non-doer and you think oh I can attain anything, give me a situation I can visualize it. Okay. So, these uh, no, two could be extreme possibilities. Uh, let me take a, a real life example for this uh, emotion dominated awareness. There is a village I am told in uh, uh, Himachal Pradesh, uh, which is primarily uh, you know, it has houses of the prominent artists of this country, a okay, small village. So, they have uh, one of their houses there, they do not stay there for long, but sometimes they come. Uh, this was shared uh, with me by one of the artists who has a hut there. So, he told me that this is the situation. Uh, in some other context, I was just looking at his paintings and he had uh, you know, sketched a cow which had multiple limbs. So, I did tell him that see uh, usually what we see is cow with four limbs and at times you have uh, you no know, one extra limb but that cow is uh, no worshipped like anything okay in uh, certain regions of this country okay we have taken this example of multiple limbs in human beings also but same is the case of cows no they are celebrated like anything the best life uh, no a cow can have is with an extra limb <laughs> now i asked him that why do you need to do that and i did also share with him that there is a, a very interesting example that is used in psychology of uh, limping elephant, I do not know if you have seen this, uh, in introductory psychology course those of you who have credited this course, perhaps you might have seen this. There is an example where the upper part of uh, the elephant remains what how it is okay. and the in the lower side you have the option of either selecting one as a feet and other one as a background or you can reverse it. So, basically it is an example of a reversible figure and interestingly uh, if you keep switching between two limb uh, two of the lower limbs you would realize as if the elephant is doing like this no? therefore it is called dancing elephant or limping elephant okay so i asked him that if you would have drawn a cow like that i would have still understood but your cow is not even limping it's not even dancing it's not even it enjoys that social uh, celebration and then he says no, he, the cow of your choice could have four legs, the cow of my choice can be anything. So, that is you know, uh, when you, your fantasy, your uh, feelings you know, is more and more dependent, although it is a creative outcome, uh, but then your awareness is more uh, driven by that. But if you uh, take the two extremes, you would realize that the more and more closer you are to the median point perhaps acceptance in the society will be much more for you. Okay. So, I do not always fantasize about things, I am not a rigid person, but I am a person who has certain feelings, who has certain thoughts, who does certain things, 
but is open to criticism, but is open to new ideas and I will see how much of it can be accommodated okay, with the given framework in which I lead my life. That would be a, a better indicator of adjustment and because it happens to be a dynamic process that helps you later on also with respect to the dimension of selective awareness, fine. Tomorrow we will continue with the other dimension.